Hey tubers, welcome back for another adventure. So we're having our little portion of Finley drop by to uh, visit us and the problem is we are getting freezing rain. See all the rain stuck on those branches. And you guys know that I have a long power line coming down the driveway and all and I'm concerned about losing power. Um, and to that end, many of you know, I started up the uh, bigger Generac generator down in the basement, but I also have an inverter that I want to get started. So what I have here is the inverter I'm talking about. It's known as an RYI 2200. It's one of the older models. I've had it for a few years. You could tell by the way it's all faded. It's been sitting out on the back um, porch in the sun which is never a good thing for this um, it is 2200 watts peak 1800 watts continuous and it's what I like about it is the power is really really clean so it's good with the TVs the satellite dish all that kind of stuff the internet so from that point of view it's really nice the second thing I like about it is it's really, really efficient on fuel. I can keep this thing running for 24 hours, like on a couple of gallons of gas. I'm lucky. I'm lucky <laughs> if I could get like six to eight hours on the bigger generators on a couple of gallons of gas. Um, and it's enough. I can run my pellet stove and, you know, battery chargers, uh, some lights. A TV set, satellite dish, easily on this, and basically everything I need. Should I need to fire up the uh, boiler or the um, well pump or whatever, I just start the Generac. But anyhow, doesn't do me much good if this thing isn't going to start, and it hasn't been started in well over six months. And once again, left out in the sun and all. So let's see what we're going to do about that. First thing you're going to do. You know, Give the gas a quick sniff, and it doesn't sound smell too horrible. So I'm um, I got a mixture of gasoline and sea foam and um, gasoline preservative. There, stable. I like to use the marine version of um, stable stabilizer. Because I figure if it'll work on boat motors, it'll work even better for land type motors. I like to use sea foam because that kind of keeps things a little cleaner. And there we are. So that's the first thing I do is I get enough fuel in there and it's probably got a half a tank. So I know it'll start and I know it's got some good preservative in it. This particular generator, inverter, whatever you want to call it, has always been hard to start. Supposedly you just put it on to cold start right there and pull the string. Unless you want to pull the string until you grow quite old and probably break the string, it's never going to start there. So I have a little trick that I use. So behind, behind this cover is the engine, the air cleaner, the place you check the oil, and so forth. Um, it does not have captive retainers. Um, they use Phillips heads, but they're not captive. So when I loosen this, it could easily pop out and get lost, which that one already did. So you loosen this, you open this door. So here we have the engine and always the first thing you want to do is check the oil and this happens to be really good about that. Never burns any but before you start it up and run it for a whole bunch of hours always a good idea to check and we could see right on there that it's got more than enough oil in it. We can see it's even right to the top very good you can see it's still clean and there we are so I know the oil's good and just to show you that it won't start though probably because I just said that it will 
I'm just gonna try to start it OEM style right here. Um, it's not a bad idea for an engine that hasn't been started in a while to give it a few pulls. So, <laughs> you guys can see it's not gonna start. What we're gonna do next is we're just gonna loosen this right up. Now this thing doesn't have a choke or a primer button and I see they don't sell this model in a year anymore and I wonder if the reason for that is because it is a bit of a hard starter. So some people don't like starting fluid. I use it and see this stuff with upper cylinder lubricant. I think that might make it a little better. But quite honestly, it does not have the same volatility that the old-fashioned starting fluid has. The old-fashioned stuff, boy, you'd uh, put a spark anywhere near it and it would flash instantly. So I'm going to work on this for a minute, give it another few pulls while not hanging on to the camera and we'll see if we can't get it to start. So after another dozen pulls or so off camera, it started right up. I will tell you, this thing would not have started without the starting fluid. So for those of you who, uh, who don't believe in it and you're not going to put starting fluid in your generator, my comment to you is enjoy sitting in the dark or enjoy doing the carburetor rebuild in the dark. I have one of those kilowatt meters on it. You guys can see rate 123.4. I've got this poster oven right here. generator to start. I'm happy with the power it produces. I'm happy with the fuel consumption. It doesn't seem to burn any oil. Um, from a, once you hit it with starting fluid, it starts. Um, so I'm going to call it, it's been reliable, it's been good. I truly recommend it. I truly recommend starting fluid. And I also recommend working on your stuff when the weather's a little nicer. Anyway, I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Be careful out there. It is icy and slippery. Nobody needs to fall down and break anything important. Bye now.